Hi, Johnny from johnnygood.com here. Thank you for joining me uh, for working with lim limitations. Um, today I'm talking about um, using a condenser mic in your home studio and the limitations you can face. Uh, now if you've already chosen to use a condenser mic it's probably because you're looking to record a sound source um, that you want to get more high-end information, capture more transients um, and, uh, and get more of a detailed sound. So you're probably recording vocals, acoustic guitars. Uh, that said, dynamic mics can be just as useful. Um, they're, I don't like to think of condensers that are better mic than a dynamic, they're just different um, and capture audio and turn it into um, electrical current and into your computer in a different way. Um, but as I say, typically these are going to be used on, on sources where you want to capture um, quite a lot of accuracy. Um, uh, now, they do also have a capture a wider um, field when recording in that you can um, kind of step further back from a condenser and still um, get your sound captured. Whereas with a dynamic, uh, you have a much uh, smaller field. You will have noticed this, um, you know, if you're singing live, if you come a foot off a mic, um, you're usually not going to get that much, that um, you know, too much picked up. And for good reason, because if you're working with a noisy drummer behind you, you don't want to be picking up um, loads and loads of his signal. You end up with just horrendous feedback problems. That's why you don't see many of these for live stage use. So go back to that. Um, the first limitation, which I kind of wanted to talk about, is um, external sound and that can um, be a real challenge you can just set your mic up be ready to do a vocal take and then someone starts mowing the lawn outside or there's um, helicopters or jets going overhead or the kids just come you know out from school um, so that can be a real problem one thing that seems quite simple but I think is really worth thinking about is there's two sides to each cardioid pattern dynamic um, condenser mic and what I mean by that is mic with a cardioid pattern is going to be accepting the sound from one side but on the other side it captures nothing it rejects sound there's nothing coming in this side so I think what you can do to help yourself is to place the rejected side towards wherever external sound is most likely to come into your room now for me uh, most of the time it's when my son is going to be playing downstairs and the sound tends to travel up and come through a door which is over there it seems to come through the doorway so I always have um, my rejected side pointing towards the doorway another thing you can do to help is always use one of these uh, condenser mic cradle um, so your mic they usually come with actually condenser mics these days but if it doesn't some mics just come with a clip if you've got one of these then you know it's going to sit in the shock mount and the 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 cradle's going to help low end rumbles which are going to get picked up from the floor go into the the base of your uh, mic stand come right up the mic stand and then go into the mic and you know you're probably going to filter quite a lot of that low end information out when you're mixing but it's great you know to start start at the beginning when recording get it right at source as much as possible so if you haven't got one of these with your mic well worth picking one up you can get one off ebay for about five or six quid so the second thing um, is one of these um, you've probably got one of these too and again these often come now with sort of condenser mic packs home recording packs um, and it's a pop shield or a filter shield or whatever you want to call it um, and this one here is just basically a clip with a gooseneck and there's your filter here now it does kind of for me two things obviously its main aim it filters out the plosives from the vocal the the P's um, and the B's the, the the sounds which generate air which are going to go onto your mic and create kind of spikes onto your recording so they filter those out but also I want you to think about this as a marker for your vocalist because what you don't want when someone's doing a vocal is to to flow in and out on the mic too much and depending on how good the singer is or whether it's you that you're, you're working with yourself um, it can be really difficult to, to keep in the same place if you're going back pressing the record button checking what you did to come back um, and I kind of used to put markers on the floor but I find a really good way to work is to get your pop shield set up about here and 
get used to kind of where your face is, get re relatively close to where this pop shield is and use that as your marker. You know, if you're right up there, you're about an inch away from here, you're going to pretty much be in the same place for the whole take and go away, go and make a cup of tea, come back and you're going to be in the same place. So you're not going to, to be getting um, proximity effect and, and mixed signals when you come back and maybe you want to do a break, come back to the chorus. Um, so I think that's a really cool way to work to get a really consistent sound all the way through your recording. And thirdly, um, and I think this one gets overlooked, certainly by myself, used to a lot, is um, working with your source before recording. Because all these things do is they kind of capture the truth. Um, I once recorded a guy who said, told me, I told him through the talk back that I thought his um, B string was out of tune in his guitar and he told me that it it was um, it was absolutely fine and in tune and it was my microphone's fault that it sounded out of tune. So that's obviously not the case. Uh, these things don't lie, you know, so with regards to stringed instruments and guitars, it's kind of difficult if you've got a few guitars or you, you I know it's expensive restringing, but if you're coming up to a project, maybe put some new strings on a day or two beforehand, get them broke in. And, um, you know, the same goes for, for all instruments, get them in good condition before you're going to record them. With regards to vocals, and here's something I never used to do, but I've suffered a lot of vocal problems over the last couple of years, so I don't want you to make the same mistakes as me, is if you're the singer or if you're working with a singer, Give them half an hour, give yourself half an hour to warm your vo vocals up. Um, if you haven't got any warm-ups or your singer hasn't, go on to Mark Baxter. Uh, type Mark Baxter in, in uh, YouTube, voicelesson.com. He's got some excellent warm-ups just on YouTube. Now, if your singer still feels really uncomfortable doing some of those warm-ups, um, then at the very least, um, get them or get yourself to go through some songs which you find quite easy to sing, just to get your voice in a good condition. If you can do it for about 20 minutes, half an hour prior to singing, you're going to get a better quality sound from your singer or your, if, for yourself and therefore get a better recording at source. It's also really healthy practice as well, again, so you don't end up having the same problems with your voice that I have in recent years. So there's three things that I think are well worth thinking about when you're um, dealing with limitations with recording, particularly with a condenser mic uh, in your home studio. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I really appreciate having some new subscribers recently. It's really cool. And uh, check out johnnygood.com and happy recording. Have yourself a great day.